everyone welcome back to my channel i'm neha parashar working in a healthcare company and based in germany this channel is a small initiative from my side to share knowledge about the pharmaceutical and healthcare world as i feel education is the best gift one can receive or give back to society so there are lots of people requested me to explain the new topic which is called combination products and regulations related to this so i'm happy to start this new video series on combination products in this video series i'll provide you a holistic view on what are combination products what are the types of combination products which regulations applies for combination products in us and eu and what are the regulatory pathways for combination products in us and eu what are the gmp requirements for combination products products in US and EU what are the differences in US and EU from a dosier point of view and so on so by end of this video series i am sure that you will be able to have good understanding on combination products regulation so let's start first let me ask you what is combination product do you know that so let me explain you that when we have drug biologics and devices any of these two component combined together two or more component combined together they are called combination products so if a drug is a combination of any of these two or more component they are called combination products in us the definition is defined under 21 cfr part 3 but in eu there is no term called combination product yeah that's true so from a terminology point of view there is a different in eu these combination products are called like integral or non integral products in general they are referred as drug device combination product ddc in eu okay so in us they are called as combination products but in eu they are called by a different name in so from a terminology point of view we have to be careful that we don't use term combination products in eu okay any of this now the next question will be coming to your mind neha is the combination products or fixed dose combination products they are same then the answer is no in ftcs or fixed dose combinations you have one drug combined with other drug or one biologics combined with other biologics but not like a combination of drug with biologics right if you have a combination of drug with biologics they will fall into the category of combination product and not fixed dose combinations yeah so when you are using this term fixed dose combination products or combination products you have to be careful with that your drug plus biologics will be a combination product while the drug plus drug or biologics plus biologics will be a fixed dose combinations okay now you must be thinking why exactly are these combination products are so important why are we discussing that right well a combination products can provide more effective treatment options for patients with complex medical conditions for example suppose a combination product which contains drug and medical device think about this situation so the drug part of it could include a drug that targets a specific disease right and the medical part of it will help to deliver this drug directly to the site of that disease right this way we can improve the efficacy of drug while reducing potential side effects let's take another example of a combination product which is an implantable devices so this implantable device is combined with biological materials to promote tissue regeneration think about the situation right this type of implantable device with biological products they will be called as combination products and this type of products will combine the benefit of the device and they will also give you the benefit of the healing property of this biological materials which will in the end result into the improved patient's outcome right so i hope now it's clear to you why the combination products are made and why they are so important why we are talking about it now i have tried to explain this complex topic of combination products in a very easy way in this video so let's see that let's start with us in us there are three types of combination products first is single entity products second is co packaged and third is cross labeled as the name indicates single entity meaning the drug and devices are physically combined together into a single product for example uh, prefill syringe pfs okay in which your drug is already filled into a syringe and that's why they are called as a prefill syringe right 
or take an example of auto injector in which your drug is filled into some kind of auto injector so this will form a single entity product the second category is co-packaged as the name indicates the drug is co-packaged with your device for example a drug vial is packaged with syringe you would have seen cuff syrup which comes with amazing spoon right so these kind of products are example of co-packaged products they fall into the category of combination products okay then the third category is cross labeled in which the drug is neither combined together with device nor it is co-packaged but they can only be used in combination for example there are certain amazing devices you would have seen right which can only be used with certain amazing agent so these are the example of cross labeled product as you can see the example of each of these three categories by this figure now let's see the type of combination products in EU. In EU, the terminology is different. However, the products fall into the similar category. In EU, products are classified into two main categories, integral or non-integral products. Integral meaning when drug and devices are combined together into a single product. So they are equivalent to single entity product in US. And non-integral means they are not combined together under which they are again there are two categories first is co-packaged which is same as us and the other is called reference products they are like cross label product in us right so you can correlate which term in eu is equivalent to which of the terminology in us now the next question comes what the regulations for combination products are and how the regulatory procedures works in US and EU. Let's first start with US. As you might be knowing, in US drugs are reviewed by CDER and biologics are reviewed by CBER and devices are reviewed by CDRH. These are the different centers who are responsible for review of your product or device. Okay. So for drugs it is CDER, for biologics it's CBER and for devices this is CDRH in general. Because combination products are the mixture of any of these components so which center will review your application it will depend what is the primary mode of action of your product suppose if the primary mode of action is a drug then the lead reviewer center will be seater for you if the primary mode of action of your product is because of biologic molecule then the CBER will be the lead reviewer center and if the primary mode of action of your product is due to device component then the lead reviewer center will be CDRH. There is a dedicated office in US for combination product which is called office of combination products. I will use the term OCP in short throughout my this video series. This OCP keeps oversight on these three centers for combination products. This OCP makes determination which center will have primary authority for review where we are unclear or if there are any dispute between any of these three centers right. So basically this OCP works with a pharmaceutical industry and these three centers which are CDR, CBER and CDRH um, this OCP works with all of us to coordinate the entire review and approval process. Also this office of combination product is also responsible to develop policy guidance and regulations related to the combination products. Now let's move to EU. What are the regulatory bodies involved in EU for such kind of combination products? Like in US, we had a dedicated regulation which describes the combination products, right? But in EU, that is not the case. In EU, there is no equivalent regulation for combination products. Rather, in EU, these combination products are either regulated as medicinal product or as medical device, depending on the primary mode of action. For example, if the primary mode of action of your product is due to drug, then your product will be regulated as a drug under the medicinal product directive. Okay? But if the primary mode of action is due to the device, then your product will be regulated as a medical device under the medical device regulation. Again, let's take the example of pre-fill syringe and auto or in auto injector, right? Uh, so the main mechanism so the main of this product is due to your drug and not due to the device right your device that is a pre-fill syringe or the auto injector is just helping to administer or deliver the drug right but the main mechanism of action is due to the drug so in this case your product will be regulated by a 
drug regulation or we can say by a medicinal product regulation in addition the device part of this combination product has to fulfill some requirements for medical device regulation as well what are those medical device regulation we will discuss that during the later part of this video but for now you should know that the driving regulation for such kind of product which is pre-fill syringe or auto injector in this case where the primary mode of action is due to the drug will be regulated by a drug regulation while in second example that is a drug eluting stent the stent are used to open the artery while the function of your drug is just secondary to reduce the inflammation right therefore this entire product will be regulated by a medical device regulation because the primary mode of action here is due to the medical device so this is how you decide whether your combination will be falling into the drug regulation or it will be falling into the medical device regulation based on the primary mode of action of your combination product so as i mentioned that for products like pfs and auto injector these kind of products will be regulated by a drug regulation because drug has the primary mode of action but the device part of this combination product has to fulfill some requirement for medical device regulation as well for that you have to understand what the regulation for medical devices are because i'm sure most of you will be knowing about the drug regulation or medicinal product regulation device regulation is new to most of you so let's see that earlier in eu medical devices were handled by a medical device directive mdd directives do not have direct applicability to the countries meaning if any product is regulated by a directive they can be adopted at a national level therefore the national level changes will exist for different eu countries to harmonize this and to increase the direct applicability medical device regulation that is mdr was made which replaced this mdd recently right so as you can see this mdr brought more requirement and more compliance for medical devices you can see in that figure right and they have direct implementation as you can see in this figure earlier the requirements for the medical devices were called as essential requirement now under this mdr they are called general safety and performance requirement meaning gspr so the medical device has to fulfill those general safety and performance requirement which are defined in mdr this mdr has several annexes as you can see it has 17 annexes right out of these annexes annex one is the one which lists the gspr gspr is very important for us for the products like pfs because pfs will be regulated as a drug because the primary mode of action is due to drug and not due to the syringe right but the device part that means the syringe part need to show the compliance with the annex one of this mdr meaning the gspr of the mdr right uh, in US, we saw that OCP is the main body which coordinate between different centers like CDR, CBR, and CDRH. So, from applicant point of view, we have to deal with just one body in US, right? While in EU, there are two bodies that we need to work with. What are those two bodies? One is health authority and the other one is notify body. Based on the assessment from these two bodies, these kind of combination products get approval in EU. You all know about the health authority in EU, right? But what is this new term called notify body? What is their role and function? Many of you might be wondering for sure. We'll discuss this notify body, their role, how do they work and how they perform their review and so on. Everything around this notify body in one of my next upcoming videos when we will be going to discuss the regulatory pathway for combination products in EU. As part of this video, we will discuss the notify body in detail. So let's stay tuned for the upcoming videos. But before we end this video, do you know what is request for designation procedure in US? Request for designation or in short, it is called RFD procedure in US. If you know the answer, then let me know in the comment section. If not, then don't worry. We'll discuss that in the next upcoming videos. Till then, let's stay tuned.